back in 2018, Dave, we talked about Santa Gold's I Don't Want the Gold Fire Sessions. And I think we just talked about it, like, because we don't really get a lot of Santa Gold. Like, <laughs> she hasn't dropped, like, a, an album proper in about six years. You know, the I Don't, I don't Want the Gold Fire Sessions had a few new tracks on them, but it was a lot of, like, running things back or remixing yeah. things. Mixed state material. So, to get a, a Santa Gold album in 2022, pretty special. I mean, back in back right before we got to college, Santa Gold's self title album dropped and immediately, immediately put her on the map, right? Like that whole album is just an absolute classic, but LES Artistes, uh, you know, Lights Out, like there's so many, uh, you'll find a way, like there's so many tracks off this that are just like absolute heat. Where does Santa Gold like even like sit in your in your brain you know like what's her standing in your eyes yeah i think it's a really good question because she's such an enigma she's seemingly rarely around so hard to place that and as you said i mean she's in her 40s at this point she's the 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 peak of her career peak of her commercial viability was long ago as you said so i don't know i kind of view her similarly to mia Mm -hmm. where they both kind of at that time back then occupy this kind of like iconoclastic forward thinking genre bending type of music making Mm -hmm. very different artists for sure but you know i don't really listen to a lot of the kind of like reggae fusion stuff that santa gold made her name on anyway so it's not like this is a scene that i'm like closely following and then when santa gold pops up it's like oh yes my queen has returned it's not really like that you know (laughs) I, i just kind of view her as like a bit of a Bit, bit of a ghost i don't know it's like i don't want to say she's an unknown because she's clearly not but it's like she really just dips in and out you know and yeah. she'll get sampled once in a while not as much anymore you know and so i think it, it definitely means a lot though to have her release a full-length album and yeah just because you don't really know what what that's gonna mean yeah you know it for me i i really think of her kind of as like this just a, a ghost is an interesting way to put it because i think like she, her presence in my mind is like oh santa gold like can't wait to listen to this i know it's going to be interesting i know it's going to be inventive and creative but because we get so little it's pretty easy for her to just kind of like fall to the wayside in terms of things and i, I certainly like love whenever i come across uh, a santa gold track on a playlist or on like a radio thing i might be listening to from like the 2000s but i don't find myself going back to her a lot um and, but whenever i do i'm just like oh yeah she she ripped she's great and so we get spirituals you know 14 years after her debut album and i gotta say man like i still think she fucking rips like <laughs> these songs <laughs> are a lot of a lot of fun to listen to they're really interesting uh, I don't think it's a perfect record, but uh, there were a couple of tracks in this that I just was like, yeah, Santa Gold still got it. I, I just want her to make music more consistently so people know, you know, so that she can establish herself more. But it doesn't seem like that's really her interest. So I, I don't I don't give her uh, don't knock her for it at all. What was your just general takeaways from the album? Yeah, I, I think that's right. There, there was definitely some cool stuff. I think more than anything, it's just like this is unique. This doesn't really immediately remind me of anything i'm hearing it definitely doesn't sound like she's compromising herself in any way as you said no. she has uh, assumingly long given up on mainstream success yeah, viability success. stuff like that for sure so just kind of just taking it for what it is i think is a uh, a lot of fun you know of uh, hearing the press seemingly santa Gold was very inspired by black folk music but it's like it's like I, I think I can get that from like some of like the vocal performances. Of course, that's this is not folk music though. When mm-hmm. when you when you listen to it, and I think you still hear a lot of her kind of trademark stuff from the past, which is this kind of atypical electronic music, you know. But it's not not as not what you immediately think of when you think of electronic music either. But like it's kind of a lot of a lot of different things going on, you know. I think uh, her vocal performances on stuff like uh, like High Priestess. It's like really oh, lively yeah. chorus, you know. It's like that. I think that that's where I think of someone like MIA, which is like that kind of vocal performance. Yeah, no, I I completely agree. I think when when she can 
really expand her vocal range over like a real thumping like bass line or something like that that's like MIA in her bag sorry MIA wow look at that Santa Gold in her bag um, I also associate her with MIA so I was glad you said that earlier um but yeah, like the two that stood out to me were High Priestess and Fall First. And that's kind of what she's doing on both those tracks, right? Is there's this like thumping B or bass line and she's just like stretching and twisting her vocals all over it. And it just sounds really awesome. You know, I really love on Fall First how it's her singing at this lower range with her kind of like own vocals in the background, kind of like making this like high pitched ooing over it. And it really creates this like, almost like creepy feeling but like in like the best way possible um you know a, a track that i was surprised i liked as much as i did was shake you know it's a bit more of like a like a groovier like kind of like churning song but it's sptrkt produced which i was like oh. uh, i was really kind of like surprised to see her like uh i don't know working with him for some reason just did not expect that um you know a couple of like other people working on this with her are like doc mckinney who's like worked with like uh the weekend and stuff and and i think that makes sense but like sptr kt i just did not expect and i feel like that song really surprised me and i really enjoyed um any other tracks that stood out to you i like shake as well too yeah it's a, it's a short track too but it makes a nice impression uh i like there's a no paradise i thought the the mm. vocals on that one just uh just very catchy um yeah uh the drums as well almost like uh the vocals are almost like a, like a call and response like the way the yeah. way you hear it thought that was a lot of fun also uh nothing the production mm. on that i thought was pretty engaging so yeah i think it's uh i think like like all the other past santa gold records it's like oh there's a lot to a lot to listen to here probably just because more often than not it's not going to be immediately familiar yeah. to other artists might be familiar if you're a santa gold fan but that's probably because you're just comparing it to her other stuff so uh definitely uh just cool to have this you know come out i wonder if she'll do like festivals next year yeah also just want to shout out uh rostam from vampire weekend real quick who has some writing credits on this um he's he really like left vampire weekend and just makes the music he wants to make and he works Mm -hmm. with some really interesting artists i feel like he's not in his uh not in his uh jack antonoff moment yet but i think eventually we're gonna get a a rasta moment for him he's had some solo albums recently yeah so i think we talked about one that was just not interesting but uh, (laughs) on the on the writing production side i appreciate him so anyways uh that's gonna wrap it up there for music as always as i say at the end of every review check out our nostalgia best of 2022 playlist on spotify and share with your friends to stay up to date on all the good music 